The undercard for the Tyson Fury Dylan White fight has now been revealed, and a lot of people are complaining that it is extremely weak. They're saying this is the worst undercard for a big UK show that they have seen in many a year. Now, my response to that would be well, personally, I'm looking forward to seeing the progression of the likes of David Adelaide, who fights Chris Healy, and Tommy Fury, who fights Daniel Bokiansky. I think you pronounce that name. I'm looking forward to those fights. Certainly, Adelaide against Healy is a prospect against the journeyman. Tommy Fury against Bokiansky, he's got a better record on paper, Bokiansky, much better than Chris Healy, but I don't know him. I don't know how good he is. I'm going to assume, maybe wrongly, but I'm going to assume that he is not particularly good and that this, just like Adelaide's fight against Healy, is a learning fight. But other than that, there's nothing else on the undercard that I'm particularly interested in. Perhaps some of them will turn out to be good fights. You've got the likes of Isaac Law, of course, who's a friend of Tyson Fury fighting Nick Ball, who's an undefeated fighter, 14-0. Isaac Law, just the one loss, but three draws. So maybe there'll be competitive fights. But in terms of uh, marquee names, in terms of prestigious fights, the undercard is lacking. But what I would say is, what did you expect? They just forked out, and by they, I'm talking about Bob Arum, Frank Warren, etc., they just forked out tens of millions of dollars for the top of the bill to pay the purses of Tyson Fury and Dylan White. Tens of millions of dollars. So that's not going to leave much for the undercard. So I'm not at all surprised that the undercard looks like this and that it's not a star-studded affair. Now, some people will say, well, that's still not good enough because the box office price is £25, which in dollars, I guess, is like $30 plus or whatever it is. So we expect a better undercard than this. But again, <laughs> you have to remember that Frank Warren and BT are not used to putting on these kind of shows in terms of the size. They haven't put on a show like this ever. If you're talking about the pairing of Frank Warren and BT, Frank Warren put on some big shows back in the day, but never this big. So this is new territory. This is uncharted territory for them. They don't know what the pay-per-view numbers are really going to be like. They don't know if they're really going to be able to recoup. Hence, £25 as the pay-per-view price. <laughs> because they want to make sure that they're actually going to be able to certainly break even, hopefully make a profit. So that's what the £25 is about. That's what the... If you don't want to say the undercard is rubbish because you might want to argue that there are going to be some competitive fights, you could say the undercard is cheap. It didn't cost much to put this undercard together. Yeah. The main event has taken up the bulk of the budget, the overwhelming bulk of the budget. <clears throat> so that's my take on it. It is what it is. If it was an Eddie Hearn show, perhaps you would get a stronger undercard. But again, that's when Eddie Hearn was on Sky. When Eddie Hearn had that pay-per-view thing going with Sky, they had a track record of constantly bringing in big numbers, especially a couple years ago constantly bringing in big numbers and because the numbers were so big and are constantly selling out Wembley they can put some better fights on the undercard they can have more satisfactory undercard bouts than we're seeing on this show for example because again the track record BT and Frank Warren at this juncture don't yet have that kind of track record so they're being conservative in terms of the undercard bouts they're putting on that's what I'll say and can I blame them? Not really. Do I see this as outright greed? Look, it's business at the end of the day, right? They just forked out tens of millions of dollars. Is it good business practice to then fork out even more? I mean, I say fork out even more. The bulk of those tens of millions are being paid to Tyson Fury and Dylan White. So they might have to, like I say, fork out even more to pay undercard fighters if they want to put on a really good undercard, a really strong undercard with big names and so on and so forth. What would you do in that situation? <laughs> you know, we sit here and criticize promoters and rightly a lot of the time, but there are instances where, you know, it can't be easy being a promoter in terms of keeping the fans satisfied, putting the fights on that the fans want in terms of main event fights, but also giving value for money on the undercard. It's not always easy, especially when you're having to pay this much money to win purse bids, whatever it was, $40 million. That's if they're actually paying that because, of course, Eddie Hearn says it was kind of an inflated or manipulated bid. 
and they'll probably be paying, I don't know, 30 million, but that's still a lot of money. It's still far more money than Frank Warren is used to paying, is used to uh, having to deal with when it comes to putting on a show. So anyway, that's my take on it. Give me your take in the comment section below. If you want to tear into Frank Warren and tear into BT and tear into Bob Arum, have at it in the, in the comment section below. But I'm just trying to be objective here, looking at the situation as it is. And, you know, it's not necessarily going to be easy to give the fans the kind of undercard that they might want after you've spent so much money on the main event. Let me know what you guys think. If you're tired of the biased narratives and mass censorship on mainstream platforms and you want to be part of a community of critical thinkers who love free speech just as much as you do, then come and join me on Patreon and access my weekly no holds barred censorship-free podcast where we lift the lid on a wide variety of controversial topics. It's not mainstream friendly. It's not politically correct. But that's the whole point. We dare to stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. Just head on over to my Patreon page and select the tier called Hatman Hot Topics. You'll gain access to a minimum of two hours of exclusive content every single week, including podcasts, videos, interviews, live stream Q&As, as well as my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. Not to mention a vast back catalog of hundreds of hours of previous episodes. You can listen via the Patreon app, with the option to download in high quality MP3. We've also got an element group where you can come and chat and hang out with myself and other members. Unlike Discord, it has full end-to-end -end encryption, it's decentralized, and it's 100% censorship free. You can also send voice notes as well as much larger audio and video files than you can on Discord. So come and sign up on Patreon. There's no contract, there's no commitment, you can cancel at any time, and it's cheaper than a cup of coffee. So I'll see you over there. I'm out.